Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here from QBsQuest.com. And today is Casing Tuesday, right after the Thanksgiving long weekend. I hope that if you're in the US and you celebrated Thanksgiving, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. So for us, it was just me, and my husband, because we're originally from Canada. Let me move the little out of the way. There's my little can Canadian flag. Um, and so our, a lot of our relatives are in Canada and they celebrate Thanksgiving in October. And so therefore, it usually is a weird holiday for us. Not weird. We're still thankful and grateful. It's just that when when you have you usually celebrate with family so it's a little different when you have two different countries and my my mom lives in one part of Canada and my husband's parents live in another part of Canada and you know it it's complicated but we did have a nice little Thanksgiving meal. I made a turkey breast and stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy. And so that was really nice. And then I took all of the turkey leftovers the very next day and I turned them into a turkey casserole. And originally when I did this, I've done this a few times now. Originally when I did this, I was like looking for recipes and stuff like that. But basically... The recipe for a turkey casserole is you just take everything that's left over and you layer it. And I always start with uh, the leftover turkey. And since we didn't have a lot of leftover turkey because we just had a turkey breast, I just cubed it, um, tossed it with the gravy, put it at the bottom. Then I put a layer of mixed vegetables um, and then I put... Um, stuffing and then the mashed potatoes on top we only did two sides this time because for two people it's kind of crazy if you do too many sides so we kind of kept it simpler but if we had had sweet potatoes I would have done a sweet potato layer um, and just layer it up and then just bake it at 350 for half an hour and there you go you've got a turkey casserole and I love that because then all of the turkey gets uh, all the turkey leftovers get eaten up in the same amount of time and that way I have leftovers for a few days that are very nicely portioned out. So that is my um, uh, turkey casserole recipe. It's just very easy. It's whatever you have left over, you layer it and then you bake it and then you put the leftovers in the fridge and you dole it out. That's my um, my recipe. And then um, so we had pumpkin pie and I cheated this year I bought the shell and I just made the filling and that turned out just great um, uh, making I'm not a big fan of making pie crust because I don't do it very often and so mine turned out to be a little bit wonky they're good they taste good but they turn to, to be you know not as nicely shaped as I've seen some I know if I, I practiced it I know I could get better uh, I just um, don't do them very often. So anyway, everything was wonderful. And uh, we had a nice weekend. We went for some nice little hikes, um, enjoyed the uh, fall weather. It was a little cooler this weekend. Um, and if you were on my video on Friday, you will notice that I no longer have a stack of boxes behind me because I was able to um, do a little tidying up in my room, which I was really overdue and I still haven't finished everything but um, it, it makes me feel a little bit better you can see a little bit of countertop now on the tables and stuff so um, that was really helpful um, going forward all right well I have a few of you on and I've talked a lot tell me how your Thanksgiving was let me know in the comments um, and I want to hear how it was and we'll talk about that afterwards Okay, let's jump in and well, first of all, what's Casing Tuesday? I talk about this almost every week, but if you're new, Casing Tuesday is the day when we take a card sample out of one of Stampin' Up's catalogs and we give it a makeover. And each week we pick a specific card and we all work on it. And then you can post it to our Facebook group. I post my cards there. You can post your card there. And it's just a neat little exercise to get you stamping with a starting point. So this week's card, I'll tell you, I found this week's card a little harder to work with. But everyone has 
cards that they work well with and not so well, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you how to make this card a lot simpler. So isn't this a beautiful card? It's got a lot of background um, papers. It's got little uh, strips of background paper and they did you know, a beautiful job. Um, the problem comes in when you don't have that type of paper to work with. So I'm gonna show you some ways to simplify how to work with strips of paper in your background. Just a gorgeous card. Um, but here is our sketch and here um, you can see all of the different um, layers that this card has. Um, I'm gonna eliminate some of those layers because it's a little bit easier if you, um, yeah, if you eliminate some of them and, and you simplify it a little bit um, because there is, I'm gonna just see right behind all of those strips, you can see some green designer series paper peeking out. That's one layer that I would eliminate personally because it's just very small and um, I, I feel like that is unnecessarily complicated. So we can take that layer out if we want to very easily. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna switch over to my other camera and we will work our way through this card. Okay, so I actually made two cards and we're gonna be making a third card with different paper because I wanna show you how to work with different paper. So, oh, I was working on these last night. So this is the first card I made um, and this paper has a lot of white in the background. And when you're working with paper that has a lot of white in the background, it can steal the thunder from your focal point layer if it is also a white layer I don't know if I can just like if you stick another white piece on there it there's so much weight on this card I don't know if I have let me see if I have a white circle that's I don't think I do in that same size but if this was all white here it, it would be very difficult to kind of like focus on that focal point layer so I did a dark focal point layer here to contrast. So that's one thing that you can do if you've got a lot of white in the background, or you can choose a paper that doesn't have white in its background. Um, when you're designing cards, you have to know kind of how the eye works and the eye is attracted to white and light. So it draws into the white. It's just a natural thing that happens when we look at something. So that's why when you're creating this card, it is like being drawn in by, by the white, but because I have this dark layer and the white words, it's, it feels somewhat balanced. So then you can also take paper and this one um, is a, a evergreen and balmy blue paper and I also cut it into strips and because it's a busy paper itself you can't maybe always see that there's little strips but there is and this time I was able to have a white focal point layer because the background didn't have white in it. So just kind of two different looks of cards that you can get from different types of paper. And we're gonna work with yet another type of paper on our third card that I'm gonna make today. And you can maybe help me decide some of the things as I go along, because I haven't made all the decisions on this third card either. Um, but I, the original layer had a circle, like an open circle. Um, and they cut out words, but since I was using the fitting or frame florets bundle, I wanted to use the words in that, so I didn't want to cut out words. So this is a different way that I, I did the focal point, and you can totally do that. But I retained the strips. That was my main thing that I, I retained, and I just glued them right to the card base. I didn't put another color behind the, the strips like that. Okay, so let's talk about this bundle that I use. This is called Framed Florets, and it is a pre 
I guess a pre-order item. Everyone can order this right now. It will be in the new catalog that is coming out in January. And this is kind of just like a pre-release and you can purchase it now. When you purchase the frame florets stamp set and the frame florets dies together as a bundle, you can save 10%. Or if you just want one of one or the other, you can just purchase them as a standalone item as well. And for a limited time only, we have this beautiful fitting florets paper. And I let me flip this over so you can see some more patterns. I've been cutting this up and using it so you can see some of the patterns here. Um, some of the patterns lend themselves really well, even to Christmas. If you want to use some of this for Christmas, you've got, you know, this subtle um, pattern here that would make a really nice backdrop for Christmas cards and actually this one here I've used on another card. Um, you can color the berries with Stampin' Blends and make them red if you wish and um, it makes it for a very festive paper but it's also great going into the spring because it's floral but this is limited time. It's actually while supplies last or until the I think it there until the new catalog starts January 4th um, I think would be the last day to order this if they have any left um, but it is beautiful paper and you can use it right into spring and it matches with this bundle all right let me pop this aside and we'll start off first of all we're going to need a card base and i'm i think i'm going to use soft succulent we may change this out but the card base i'm doing a tent fold with the score line up at the top of the card so it's 11 inches by four and a quarter inches and then i scored in half at the five and a half inch mark and then you fold it and you use a bone fold folder to flatten it and then I picked some different paper because, you know, want to be a little different. So we can either use this subtle side if you want, or we can use this floral side. You guys get to choose what side we use. So if we're going to use the floral side, let's see if I can get this in order, or we'll choose the other side. I have a feeling you guys are gonna choose the floral side. You're gonna make me work for it. Okay, so we can either use the florals or we can use this very subtle pattern. Um, it's very, very light. So I have one vote for floral. Um, there we go. Another vote for floral. Okay, we're gonna go for floral. Okay, so I cut these strips. These are four inches by one inch. If you are using them like in a floral pattern like this, I have them arranged in a row so they kind of make logical sense. You don't need to do that. You can mix them up a bit. On the original card, we they had two different patterns of strips. I recommend if you're having difficulty with this card, um, I recommend choosing just one paper and putting them into strips. The problem with the two tone, um, the patterned strips, if you use two different ones, you're, you're really going to draw your eye to the stripey pattern. Like I just, I just flick this over, turn this over. Um, and this pattern, you know, you can really see the contrast a lot. On the original card, they chose two patterns that were very similar, but just slightly different. So it didn't make the eye go kind of crazy. So you could do the little flip if you wanted to. We could do that. Let's see. We'll lay this on here. We could do both. We don't have to glue anything down right to the end. So, so that was kind of the pattern of the original card, having the two different kinds of paper. I think we're gonna just go with the floral. Um, and then we have to decide, yeah, I really feel like we should probably stick to one or another. We need to decide um, how we're gonna do this layer. And I think we'll maybe cut ourselves I think we might do Knight of Navy on here. 
And I did bring in some navy cardstock over here. We'll need to die cut this. And we're also going to need um, an oval, which I already cut. We'll just go ahead and cut this one on our die cutting machine. Let me grab that. Lifting over the machine. Okay. So I've got my base platform, which is number one, thin die adapter number two, a cutting plate, number three, cardstock die with the cutting surface down, and another clear plate, number three. And we're gonna run this through. I'm just gonna bring this back. I don't think it necessarily needs the backward stroke. Sometimes with more intricate dies, it helps to cut them that way. Okay, and if I just flick this, most of these little pieces come out. This is a really nice die for um, the removal of those little chads. So I just cut that piece. And then if you've got something like this going on with all of those little pieces, just get yourself like um, an old credit card or an old hotel room key that you forgot to bring back uh, or that you brought back and then just, um, just scoop that right into the, um, like go like that and shuffle it right into the garbage. And that's the easiest way I've found to get rid of that. Okay, let me just stick this aside for a moment. We are building this card bit by bit. I can, I already feel like this is just way too much contrast. It doesn't look so bad on camera, but if you stick this on here, I think it's just way, way, way too much contrast. Okay, where are all my little pieces? I could have sworn I cut myself a little white layer earlier. And it is, it is just gone. Did I stick it in here? Hmm. All right. Sometimes things mysteriously disappear. On my desk and I, I swear I don't have that much stuff on my desk today just like that pencil mark from last week the one that I uh, thought was an ink mark yeah it's kind of like that okay it is just disappeared we'll we'll cut we need to cut ourselves an oval then so I can show you I know I cut one because I I did that this morning before coming on here <laughs> But okay, I need the inside oval from here, from this one. So I'm just measuring this out on my trimmer. I'm not die cutting on here. I'm just kind of seeing how much cardstock I need. So I need about that much. And then we'll bring the stamp and cut in a box machine. I'm sure I'm gonna find my oval in a moment as soon as I cut this extra oval same sandwich as before and you can you know put the whole thing on there and then you can use the frame for something else okay here's the oval that i needed Know where that, oh, I know where the other oval went. I think I stuck it on top of a card. No, it's not there. Okay. Uh, it's okay. We'll find that oval later and it will be made into another card. So we've got this and yeah, I think it's too busy. So we're gonna, we're gonna flip these over. That's the problem with too much contrast. If you can find two papers that are very similar in tone, then you're going to be okay. But otherwise, it's going to be it's going to be harder for you. So that's why this particular layout is a much harder one to deal with. So I'm going to put this down here. Oh, this doesn't have a lot of contrast. We could do. 
do. Let me see. I've got my little, what I did is as I've been creating cards, I've been creating extra die cuts in different colors and I just stick them in my stamp case. So it's great for experimentation purposes and later on you could, we could do this and we could use, we could do like a navy circle or we could do a green circle in the center. And then we could white emboss. No, I don't like that. Or we could just do the, the white. That looks good too. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Do you like the white with white? Or shall I do like the, the navy? I think the navy is a little too dark. I think we should just go with the white. What do you think? Balmy blue center. We could do that. Let me read all your comments. Um, white frame and native navy oval. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Following along but using a... Oh, Mary's following along but using a balmy blue card base. We could do a balmy blue card base too. Um... We could, let's do, let's do soft succulent and then let's do, I'm trying to think we could do, I'm trying to think if we should change up the center oval. This one is Knight of Navy, but it's a little, it's a little bigger. I might go for, with a like smaller one if I can. That kind of looks good. Okay, let's just cut this into a smaller oval though. We're just experimenting big time today. And that's what I want to point out with this particular challenge with those paper pieces in the background. This one becomes a little bit harder to do. So you have to experiment, but that's okay. It's, it's okay to experiment. And then once you get your card made, what I suggest is doing a few of the same card. Because once you've got a nice look coming on, I, I, I ruined this outside oval because I wanted to use up that navy oval. So this one's kind of unusable because I cut it out of the bigger oval, but Let's see if I like this. I don't know. I'm still experimenting. I, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll 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 do some different stamping. I think though we need to get rid of. Let's try and grab some Knight of Navy ink here. I'll do that first. Experimentation. So that would be one look. We could do that. I think that's too much white. Flip this. That makes that a really on on camera. It's it it looks kind of too blended in. Um, and I think also this is also too dark, but I could possibly do that, like maybe do the balmy blue frame. That might look nice. Or I want to actually do some heat embossing on this one. Let's go ahead and do that and see how that looks. Total experimentation. Okay, I've got my Versamark here and I'm going to stamp this. Oh, I'm going to grab my embossing buddy. This is from the embossing additions toolkit. 
Just wipe that down first so that stray flecks don't stick. And this is white from our basics embossing powder. And I've dumped it into a little container because that way it's just easier to use. And there's some stray flecks there. And then we're gonna heat this up with our heat tool. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to add a flower to the bottom of this. Because I want to show you a little trick before I heat this up. I'll do it all in one go. Always move your embossing powder out of the way of your heat tool so you don't accidentally melt the embossing powder that you don't want to melt. Okay, you can also use tweezers, which come in that toolkit, and use them so you don't scorch your fingers. And you can see, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the embossing powder actually changes color a little bit once it's melted. Okay. So you can kind of see it got all melty and nice. We're gonna let that cool a little bit and then we're gonna color that flower with um, Stampin' Blends and turn it into a different color. Okay, we're working along here. I think I want to cut myself a balmy blue frame. Now that I've seen the different outcomes of the different frames, I'm not quite happy with any of them yet. So let's try balmy blue. And I've got myself a piece of balmy blue cardstock. This corner's a little bent, so I'm going to use this corner. And let's just lay this out here just to see how much. I need that looks about good and then we'll put this on here again it's just kind of measuring out how much cardstock I need if I don't have a a scrap piece and that way I don't waste cardstock all right this is going through the die cutting machine Putting it together. Same sandwich as before. How many of these spare pieces am I going to cut today? Roll it all the way through. leave that to clean up later on hopefully I won't need the machine anymore again otherwise I'll have to clean up in between okay let's get rid of these little guys okay ah, I just flicked one of my pieces of paper Okay, so this is the messy design process that you don't often get to see when I'm making a card. It's not always precise and easy. So now we've got this blue frame. Ooh, so we could stick that on there. That looks nice. Or we could go with this one. I think this one's a little too dark now. But I think this one makes me happy. That looks good. 
Okay, but I wanted to show you if I was going to use this piece right here, and I, on this piece right here, you see how I, that's pink? Well, you can turn your flower any color you like with a Stampin' Blends marker because you can color your white embossing. So I'm going to use, this is a balmy blue dark, and I'm just going to hit this. Is my marker super dry or what? Okay. Okay, now it's, it's uh, the blue is just such a, a light shade. It's not really, you know what? I'm going to go a little darker. I'm going to use Tahitian Tide because that balmy blue just wasn't coloring dark enough. So you might have to choose a medium dark or a dark color for it to show up on, on your thing. So this is kind of neat to be able to do this, to create kind of different colors of embossing powder without having different colors of embossing powder. You just will color on with your Stampin' Blends. Okay, that worked really well. This is the Tahitian Tide Dark. And I'm leaving the white intentionally, intentionally um, open like that. And just for a little contrast, I don't know if you can see that or not. And what I would do, as I did with this one, I would stick like a, an opal in the center of that. And then you could use that for a different card. So, um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this card right here. And what I might do is I might add a little floral down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that in navy. Like that. All right. And I am gonna try using the balmy blue marker because I think Tahitian might be a little dark, but we can test that out. Kind of start with balmy. Um, this is dark balmy. And we're gonna kind of shade on the outside and we'll come in with the balmy blue light. and shade the inside. We'll leave the center with a little bit of white like that. So just a little bit of color and we'll probably put an opal in the center. Okay, I like that. Okay, so let's assemble this. So you can either start at the top or the bottom and I'm just going to take a little bit of Tombow and I'm leaving probably a little bit less, um, probably about a sixteenth of an inch on the bottom and then it's centered from side to side so there's an eighth of an inch on the side. So I just have to make sure if I want these strips to align back that I put them in the correct order. So just about a sixteenth of an inch in between. Um, otherwise you'll run out of room up at the top if you're using uh, four inch by one inch strips. So just layer those up. Would have been a totally different card had I used the subtle pattern, but I think you guys were right. I think using this beautiful paper pattern, sometimes I'm scared to use too much pattern because it, that's why we had to like work a little bit for our focal point layer because we were, you know, the, the paper has such a strong pull for the eye that it, it makes it a little harder for your focal point layer because your focal point layer has to compete with that. 
Okay, so we've got kind of that, this background base is soft succulent. So it's like a, a light bluey green. And then we've got this layer here and I'm, there's one little piece that doesn't want to come out. Okay, and when I do this, I kind of just lightly, just kind of rub my glue tip over just a little bit, just kind of hitting the different areas. And then I'm going to center this on the card. Approximately. Okay. And then we'll also center this. So if your card doesn't come together perfectly right away, play with it just like I did today. Just play with your card. I think it helps a lot if you use all the same color strips because that's one problem kind of solved. So now we can see if we want to add maybe a little bit of ribbon down here. And I think if I got my little ribbon spool here, this is actually evergreen window pane ribbon but I think it works well on here too because it's dark enough it almost tricks the eye into thinking it's it's a blue ribbon so we can do one of two things we can either just tie this with a little knot and make kind of a more subtle sort of bow here like this or we can tie a full-on bow and make it kind of more so there's there's the two choices of bow do you do we go big do we go and do a big old bow like this one or do we use just the little knot like on this one here so we've got two different choices let me know what you think little bow or little knot or um a big old bow let me know what you think and oh well in the meantime I'm gonna grab find my opals which have also gone missing everything has gone missing today seriously <laughs> yeah I don't know did I drop things into the garbage no I am serious that I need to go through everything in my paw right here. Okay, there's that, there's that. Okay, my opals have also gone missing. Okay, so it's not just one thing that's gone missing, it's, it's a bunch of things. I'm looking around and my opals are just gone. They're probably like sitting somewhere where I have just obscured them. Okay, I am gonna use, since I can't find my other in color opals, we're going to use uh, regular opals instead. They're so weird. It's got to be around here somewhere. Oh my gosh. Okay, they're nowhere to be seen. So we're going to use regular opals. So I'm going to use, let's see, this one's the smallest one we have. So we'll probably just pop that right in the center. And we could add a couple more if we wanted to. But maybe we'll just leave it like that with one little one in the center. Okay. I have some that say knot. Okay, so we're going to do a knot. And later on, I will go find all of my missing craft supplies that have just walked off the job. Okay, so we're going to do a little knot down there. And the way I'm going to adhere that is I'm going to take some tear and tape. And we are going to put it onto the backs of these little ends of the ribbon. And that way we have a lot of surface area and hopefully that bow will stay in place. Now we're just press down. And I have zero fingernails, but there we 
go. Number one, number two. We're gonna just add that off to the side like that. And there we go. There are three cards, very different. Well, th this one and this one are a little bit alike. Um, if I went with a subtler pattern, I could have chosen that bolder frame um, and used a knight of navy or a um, evergreen frame. But because I needed some contrast, I went with the balmy blue frame. So I kind of went back to kind of this card here. I could have cut out a floral like I did on this card here too, but probably not because that would have competed with the florals in my paper, right? So the reason I could put a floral here is because this was kind of um, a more neutral pattern, right? So you kind of have to work with the different with the different patterns and try and come to a way of, of bringing things out so that they pop. So don't be scared of this particular challenge. You might need to work on it a little bit. Um, I don't, when I'm creating cards, they don't always all come together perfectly right away. I, I have to experiment a little bit. And you can see with my little case here that I've done a lot of experimentation. I've got a lot of different uh, frames and leftover pieces and stuff and so, I just leave those in there and next time I need to play around with something, then I have a few to work with and um, do some more experimentation. So I hope that will give you some idea of how to work this challenge today. All right, thank you so much for your input, Mary. I hope your card turned out well because I, Mary was making one with a balmy blue card base. So that's fun that she was playing along with me right away and, and making the card. She probably got her card done a little faster than me though. So that's <laughs> kind of cool. Okay, I do have a host code for the month. So let me tell you about that. That's if you wanna place an order with me. And we just have two more days left of the month. Um, so if you, um, this host code was only good, good for two more days. And I have um, my stamp set special is going on right now. So for every $50 you spend, you can choose one of my retired stamp sets. And I'm going to just pull out a couple again um, just to um, show you what there, there is. Um, I've got a lot of different um, stamp sets um, that I unmounted from my wood mounts and you'll um, they come in a case just like everything else and um, they are cling mount so you can see um, the background and they work you know really well still um, in very good condition because I, I keep my supplies in really good condition. And I, um, so uh, people have been taking advantage of it. I've sent out many, many stamp sets this month. I had to add some stamp sets to my choices because um, I was running low on options for everyone. So I added a few more. So if you wanna take advantage of that special, use that host code. And if you don't want a stamp set and you still want to place an order with me, no worries. I You will still get a gift. I am going to, anyone that doesn't choose a stamp set is going to get a free um, embellishment gift at the end of the month. It's going to be a surprise and um, it will be a sent to you as soon as I close out my host code for the month and I'll send you a thank you card with your gift. All right. Let's go in and dive in and let's talk to all of you, see if, if how your Thanksgivings were. Um, good morning to Chris and Holly and Marty. Um, Marty said she stayed home. Her son did a vegan Thanksgiving, which was delicious. I have heard that vegan Thanksgiving can be very delicious. Um, so, but she decided, Marty decided to stay home and rest. Well, I hope you're feeling better. Good morning, Dee. 
Good morning, Cindy. Uh, Cindy says where it's freezing and <clears throat> she's in Everett, Washington, where it's freezing and possible snow by day's end. Oh, no, we really haven't. We've had a few flakes in the sky, but we have not had snow yet here, like snow enough to say anything about. So I like to keep it that way um, because, um, yeah. Uh, until until the new year, until after all the holiday celebrating is over, I just prefer that. I know some people really want a white Christmas, and I think the only people that really want a white Christmas are people that don't have to travel or don't mind traveling in the snow. I I I think white Christmas is like a logistical nightmare for me. So, um, so uh, we can have snow in the new year when I'm not uh, trying to travel through it so um just a preference of mine but if you guys want a snowy christmas i will not not be upset if if that's what you wish for um let's say okay good morning Kay from north carolina and thank you for sharing Kay. um Cindy says she loses stuff in front of her all the time. I swear, I have no idea where those opals went. I'm just like, I'm going crazy this morning. For some reason, I, I may have stuck them somewhere. Just like with my little white opal, I may have put them somewhere at the last moment. I don't know, but we have to move on. We we can't have a, a three-hour Facebook Live in the morning while I clean up my room and find all my missing items. So apparently well my i have to say that this area is actually pretty tidy so i don't really don't know where they went they may have gone in the garbage which sits right next to my craft table so i'm gonna have to double check and go through there if that i didn't accidentally knock stuff and i did knock some things down earlier so i could have maybe knocked other things down when i knocked that piece of paper down so who knows um uh, I want to, I, I, Mary, I hope I get a chance to see your card because uh, it sounds really nice with the balmy blue card base. Um, let's see. Hello, Ellie. Um, Ellie likes the balmy blue and white combination. Holly likes the pretty flower. Um, all right. I'm sorry, Marty, I didn't tie the bow and put it on the front. We had two people setting knot before we got to your bow. So um, uh, I will, I had to go with the knot. But, you know, either one I think would have been fine um, with when the cards are, are all assembled. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. Please post your cards on the Casing Tuesday Facebook group. It is open to everyone. If you want to find out how to get there, look down below in the description of my video. You will find probably absolutely everything you need, including a supply list, a link back to my blog, a link to the Casing Tuesday Facebook page. If you like to label the ends of your stamp and blends, there's also a link to my PDF with all the current colors of um, blends. All you need to do if you want to use those is print them out on, I use, um, I print them out on basic white cardstock and then you need a 3 8 inch circle punch and um, you will need to get that from somewhere else other than Stampin' Up! because I don't think we've ever sold a 3 8 inch circle punch because uh, I do not have one from Stampin' Up! and I've kept all my circle punches. Um, and then once you've got those punched out, you just take a mini glue dot, put it behind that little dot and stick it on the ends. That way you can tell at a glance what each color is. And the LT stands for light and DK stands for dark because we they come in pairs, a light and a dark. And there's a label for every single current stamp and blends that we have. If you have retired stamp and blends, go over to my blog. I also have a list with all the retired colors as well. If you want to um, add those to your older stamp and blends markers. 
All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a great week. I will be on YouTube on Friday doing a live. I'm, I haven't decided what I'm doing yet this week. It will be either a box or a fancy full card, but I'm sure it's going to be good. And I will have a project sheet for my Friday project sent out on Saturday. So if you want my weekly project sheets, make sure you are on my email list and you can find the link to my email list down below in the description of the video. All right, let's see. Marty says, if she was in charge, we would not have lots of, we would have lots of snow, but not on the sidewalks and roads. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. Wish for the snow to fall just in the yards, right? Not on the driveways, not on the sidewalks. Let's not inconvenience everyone. That would be perfect. <laughs> uh, and good morning, Pam from North Carolina. I'm glad you joined us at the end. Um, you can go watch um, the replay afterwards. Um, uh, Marty thanks me for a great case. Well, you're welcome. I hope you guys will try it. Try it with different paper um, and just work out a little bit. Try it like I did. Like, you know, this color doesn't work. Try that color. Just remember, white draws the eye in. So if if you're, but if you have a lot of white on your card in your paper, you're going to have competing focal points if you do a white main layer and then the white in the paper in the background so you're going to need to find some way to contrast that if you want your eye to be drawn in nicely so but play around have fun it's paper you can experiment all right i hope to see you on friday have a great week take care everyone Bye bye